Yeah, and, and like many of our NFL counterparts right now, we're you know we're working with local government to really try to get to a safe amount of capacity. So, for example, in Minnesota right now, uh, our indoor capacity for the state is 250 people. Um, so, you know, obviously this is so with the last two games, we had 250 friends and family to really test out how this would look for us. And and you can see that, uh, you know, for us, we're just trying to this is new for everybody. We're, we're still trying to figure out exactly how to enforce these mask rules and how to monitor them, how to how to track them. And in tandem, working with the governor's office to really give them a high definition picture of uh, you know, the 250 social distance C manifest, but further also, if you look at this graph that, you know, the lowest point is 87% people have a mask on. So most, at most of the time and most of the game, um, people are, you know, um, are wow. behaving, are, 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 you know, enforcing the mask rule. Um, so those are really positive storylines that want to continue to, 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 to support our, our case of increasing fans and, and get into a capacity where it's feeling that's manageable and safe for our fans. Again, this is about fan experience, about safety, it's about comfort. Uh, so the more of these pure evidence of what fan behaviors are and how we can enforce that, uh, the better for our case. And, and this graph is really powerful for us. I mean, again, the, the lowest point is 87% of uh, people have masks on, uh, you know, of course, we don't want those few people to get their mask on, but this is a really great chart, a really great impactful information to give to our local government and others to say, look, we, we could do this. We can enforce the, uh, the mask on rule um, if we do it right. So this is a really, again, to me, a, a powerful factual slide. And I think, so, uh, sorry, go ahead, Tinas. No, no, you go for it. I was just going to say, I think uh, the social distancing metrics, as Rich mentioned, are going to be um, impactful for teams looking to open their venues. Um, and as you mentioned, saying, hey, look, we have, yeah, 87% was the lowest, um, the lowest number. I mean, 13% of fans not wearing their mask at any point in time was the was the most we had during the entire game. And that's, I, I believe, personally, a great statistic. Obviously, we'd like to be 100%, but fans are eating and drinking and things like that. So it's not always going to be at 100%. But um, being able to utilize these stats to um, reopen venues and get fans back into the stadium. And then just as a safeguard as well, once fans are back in the stadium using some of these metrics, in addition to um, the mask usage, also being able to utilize the information of um, section capacity. So obviously fans have a seat assigned to them when they go back into the stadium and fans are socially distanced. But what happens if fans start to move around the stadium and, and one section becomes over capacity, you know, in real time, us being able to, to notify um, staff and for them being able to see that information and say, okay, well, we need to go break up this section a little bit. Um, and then for teams being able to look back after every single game and say, wow, we did a great job today, or wow, we really need to work more on mass usage in the, in the lower bowl or the upper bowl or this section and things like that. Um, I think it's data that's gonna be um, very important for not only, as I mentioned, reopening these stadiums, but uh, keeping them open in the future.